Okay, here's a practice problem for forecasting financial statements. You're the CFO of a company that makes solar powered lamps. And the purpose of this exercise is deter to determine potential funding for next year according to how much growth you anticipate. You currently have a balance of 15,880 on a short term line of credit. You also have a high 172,500 of long-term debt. But you've agreed to, the bank has agreed to increase long-term debt to 325. We're going to assume that takes place at the beginning of the following year, 2012, uh, in terms of the timing of this case. In addition, you've got, uh, the reason why you need the funding is because you anticipate growth. And so you anticipate selling 12,800 units at 89 apiece. So you anticipate a revenue next year level of 1139200 for 2012. 1139200 cost of goods sold. 46 per unit, so 12,800 times 46 gets us to 588,800. There's our revenue and our cost of goods sold forecast for 2012 that we're going to need at the top part of our income statement. There's a bunch of other assumptions in here. SG&A expense, research and development, taxes, cash balance, you're hiring a new credit manager, it's going to collect five full days faster than the prior level. Inventory turnover is expected to be 10, which means that you turn your inventory over 10 times per year, which corresponds to a days on hand of 365 divide by your turnover, 36.5 days. You're going to spend 320000 on PP&E. It's going to be depreciated straight line over 10 years. So depreciation expense on the new PP&E will be 32000 Accounts payable, takes you 20 days to pay your vendors. Uh, you've paid dividends in the past at either the rate of 30% of earnings or 20,000. In 2012, you're going to pay at the rate of 50% of your earnings. You're also going to issue stock, 1,000 shares, 16 bucks a piece. So, of course, it's going to result in an increase. of $16,000 to your common equity. That also is going to, we think about it a little bit more carefully, common stock is going to rise by 16000 And that's going to allow us to raise some cash. Short term line of credit carries an interest rate of 11. Long term debt, 9.5%. Okay. It says all interest expense should be calculated based upon average 2012 balances. And so we're going to have to figure out what those are. Again, you have a short term line of credit of 15,880. Line of credit. 15,880. And you also have long term debt of 325,000. On way. And I'm going to assume that you, you take that out 
at the beginning of the of the year uh, in anticipation of growth needs. All right, so for the income statement, we've already estimated sales for next year. This is two slides ago. One, one, three, nine, two hundred. We've already estimated cost of goods sold a couple slides ago of five, eight, eight, eight hundred. So that gets us to a gross profit, which is just the subtotal between those two. Five eight 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 hundred. So gross profit five fifty four hundred. Operating expense. Well, depreciation last year was seventy five thousand on the equipment that existed at the time. I'm going to assume that you have, because you use straight line depreciation, depreciation expense this year would have been 75000 as well if it were not for the new purchased equipment, which has depreciation of 320000 divided by 10, or thirty two grand. So your total depreciation expense is going to be 107000 and I got this by taking last year's depreciation expense and adding 32000 to that to reflect the depreciation on the new machinery and equipment. Sales general and administrative expense, if you look on the previous sheet, SGNA is going to be 16% of revenue. Last year it was 14 or 15, this year it's going to be 16%. So 1139200 times 16%. So that gives us our SGNA of 182,272. Research and development last year was 54,000. This year, R&D is going to increase by 11 so they're going to spend more money this year so we're going to add 11.5 to last year's figure to arrive at 65.500 of research and development so that gets us to an operating profit of 550,400 our gross profit minus all of our operating expenses Appreciation SGNA and R and D. So that gives us an operating profit of one ninety five six twenty eight. Interest expense last year was 18134. Interest expense is going to be driven by the amount of debt that we have times the interest rate on that debt. Again, we have a credit line of 15880 at 11%. So credit line 15880 at 11%. And we also have long-term debt of 325,000 at an interest rate of nine and a half percent. And I'm assuming that you are taking out the long-term debt of 325,000 at the beginning of 2012 in anticipation of growth. And that will be maintained throughout the year. So the interest associated with the line of credit is 1747 and the interest expense associated with the long-term debt is 3875. 
30875 So that gets us to a total interest expense of 32622 So my pre-tax income, therefore, is going to be 163006 And I'm going to pay taxes at the rate of 40% of that number. So 40% times my pre-tax income gets me to 65202 So my net income, oh, by the way, we don't pay some of that interest expense until the following year, but we still incur the expense. So um, the expense is incurred as we've earned our income, and that's when we have to um, uh, accrue the expense. And we pay a third of it next year, which is going to influence our tax liability. So 163.006 minus 65202 gets us to 97804 and then we're going to pay our dividends at the rate of 50% of earnings so we're going to pay dividends of 48902 so there's my forecasted income statement as well as an estimate of what dividends are going to be next year. So now we can move on to estimating the uh, next year's balance sheet. So cash, so we're going to estimate 12, 31, 12. Here's my 2011 data. So cash, we want to maintain a minimum balance, we would like to, of 60,000. So that's going to be our goal, and we're going to try to achieve a level of financing that allows us to do that. So 60000 My accounts receivable. My accounts receivable, see what it says. Accounts receivable base sales outstanding is going to fall five days from the 2011 level. So I have to estimate or calculate what my 2011 level was and then drop that down by five days. So my accounts receivable days sales outstanding is calculated to be AR accounts receivable times 365 over sales. So for 2011, My accounts receivable, 67,000 times 365, divide by my 2011 sales of 816,000. And when I do this, I get last year's DSO, so 67,000 times 365 divided by 816 gets me to about 30 days. So it took me on average 30 days to collect in 2011. So that means uh, 2012, we're hiring somebody that's going to improve that by five days. So that should translate to a collection period of 25 days for 2012. 25 days. I know what my 2012 revenue is, 1139 2000, 200, 1139 200. The only thing I don't know is my account receivable, and that's what I'm going to solve for. So I put together the formula to reveal, 
according to what we sell, and if we collect five days faster, what will our forecasted accounts receivable balance be? So I moved some things around algebraically and solve for what my AR will be. So 1139 200 times 25 divided by 365 gets me to about $125,000. Sorry, recalculating 78,027. That feels better to me. Okay, so again, take 25 times 1139200, divide by 365, and that solves for my AR forecast of 78,027. So inventory, last year inventory was 35,000. Inventory days on hand, expected to be, call it 37 in 2012. So inventory write down a days on hand as days on hand equals inventory times 365 over cost of goods sold. So in this case, again, I have an inventory days on hand of 37. I'm looking for my inventory. Let's write it over here where we have a little bit more room. I don't know my inventory forecast. But I do know I'm going to have it on hand for 37 days. And I do know my cost of goods sold is 588 800 So I'm going to use that to solve for my inventory forecast. So 37 times 588 800 divided by 365 gets me to 59,687. So that gives me my total current assets of 60,000, 78,000, 027. Plus 59,687, 197,714. I'm going to check that number. Okay, looks good. All right, so those are my current assets. PP&E. Property plant equipment says that we're spending 320k on new property plant and equipment. So my gross property plant and equipment is going to go up by 320,000. So gross PP&E is going to be 1207. Accumulated depreciation was 224000 last year. And the accumulated depreciation changes by the year's depreciation expense. This year's depreciation expense is forecasted to be 107000 So we're going to add 107000 to that figure and get 331 of accumulated depreciation. So my total long-term assets ends up being 876,000.
and my total assets combining current and long term. One oh seven three seven fourteen. One oh seven three seven fourteen. So there's the assets forecast. One oh seven three seven fourteen. Moving on to liabilities and shareholders equity. Accounts payable. If we look back at the assumption sheet, accounts payable. We're going to take 20 days to pay. So, we take 20 days to pay. And I don't know my accounts payable next year. But I do know my cost of goods sold. So, if I plug it in, I should be able to solve for that. 20. Accounts payable times 365 divided by my forecast of 588 800. That backs me into an accounts payable. Of 32263. I'm going to calculate that again because it's surprising to see that it's gone down. So I'm going to check my work. And it's right. So what can explain accounts payable balance declining from one year to the next? Well, only two there are, only, there are two drivers, what you bought and how quickly you paid. What you bought went up from 410 to 588. So that should drive accounts payable up. So you must have paid much more quickly. And if we if we calculated last year accounts payable days, we would have seen that it was higher. So how about taxes payable? How much do we owe for taxes? Remember that we incurred a tax expense of 65202. If we paid the entire thing, we'd have no taxes payable. But we know that some of it was outstanding as of the end of the year, one third. So one third of 65,202 is 21,734. And that remains a liability as of the end of the year. Short term short term debt remains fifteen eight eighty. So that gets us to our current liabilities total. Sixty nine eight seventy seven. Pretty close to the prior year. Long term debt. Again, I'm going to assume that you've you've taken out the whole balance as it says, three hundred twenty five thousand. So that gets us to total liabilities of. 394,877. What else do we know? Uh, common stock. Started the year at $350,000 of common stock. The things that drive common stock are if we issued equity, that number will go up. If we've repurchased stock, that number will go down. In this case, we've issued common stock. We've issued common stock of a thousand shares at 16 bucks a piece. So common stock is going to go up by 16,000.
Now you might say, well, doesn't that also impact cash? Yes, you raised money by issuing stock. It's already reflected in this increase in the cash account. In other words, this part of the $60,000 that you are having on hand, that you hold on hand, is reflective of the share issuance during the year. So it's already baked in there. We don't need to add it again. Retained earnings. Retained earnings is influenced by two things, three things. Last year's retained earnings plus this year's net income minus this year's dividends gets us to our forecasted retained earnings balance. That's the ugliest arrow ever. So last year's retained earnings, 188.020 plus this year's net income of 97.804 minus the dividend that we anticipate paying of 48,902. 236,922. So my total owner's equity Six oh two nine twenty two. Total liabilities and owner's equity. The total liabilities are three ninety four eight seventy seven. Owner's equity of six oh two nine twenty two gives me a total of nine ninety seven. $7.99. So I'd like to say that we're done, but we're not because our balance sheet doesn't balance. Our total assets is 1073714. Liabilities and owner's equity is 997.799. We didn't do anything wrong. But what's going on is that we're growing and we actually require more funding. So we need to adapt our funding need to reflect what we've bought. And again, we now own 1,073,714 worth of stuff. And we haven't financed that properly. So we're short by our funding need. It's going to be the difference between the two. The 1073,714. So 1073,714 minus 997,799. So our balance sheet is off by $75,915. So we need to finance this somehow. And so we can do a few things. Um, we can reduce the amount of cash that we want to have on hand. So we can cut this down to maybe 15, and that's going to save some. We could uh, stretch out our payables, and that would increase our accounts payable number. That will help. We could issue more stock if we wanted to, and that will help. In this example, though, we're going to keep it a little bit more straightforward and, and say, well, we didn't borrow enough money. So instead of borrowing 325000 we should have borrowed... 400,915. So this 325,000, not enough. And so what we need to do is bump that up. And so it's going to get a little messy because if that changes, then my total liabilities is also going to change. And then this will change the total liabilities and owner's equity. So now if I borrow 400,000 
915, that changes my total liabilities. Again, this is a new amount of funding. 400, 915, plus 69, 877, gets me to 470, 792. And now when I add my that to my owner's equity, I arrive at 1073.714. And that takes care of my funding need. But you might also remember that, well, that's going to have repercussions. Remember that long-term debt carries an interest cost of 9.5%. So I would now need to technically revise my interest expense. Previously, I said I had 325k at nine and a half percent, but now I've got 400,000 and a little bit, 915. I'm at nine and a half percent. Thirty-eight oh eighty-seven. And so that's my interest on my revised long-term debt forecast. I still have my 1747 on the line of credit that I had previously. So my revised interest expense is going to be 39,834. 39,834. I'm not going to put that in here because it has a bunch of other dominoes that I'm not going to address. But to, it's important to understand how it flows through. So if my new interest expense replaces my original forecast, I can see that my interest costs go up by about 7000 So think about the things that are going to change. This goes up. So my pre-tax income is going to change. My taxes are going to change. My income is going to change. Dividends are going to change. And that floats through to some items on the balance sheet as well, namely taxes payable changes because your tax has changed. So it's going to float through and in influence your subtotals here. It also influences your retained earnings balance because that gets impacted by earnings and dividends. So it does have some float through, but it's not going to have a huge impact. We could do another pass at it if, this, if we had a spreadsheet out here, uh, but we're not going to. So this ends our uh, basic income statement balance sheet forecast to determine next year's funding need provided with a set of assumptions around your operating efficiency and your growth expectations.